There's a reason Sony has been a leader in the compact, changeable lens, mirrorless camera category. And their new Alpha A6000 is further proof that the engineers at Sony are really focused. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. When I'm helping my friends pick out cameras, I ask them questions like, what matters most to you, speed? The feature set? Do you want a good variety of lenses? Ergonomics? Quick access to controls? Do you need great image quality? Or are you looking for value for your dollar? And then, based on their answers, I try to point them to a few good options. But no matter which of these things is most important to you, if you're considering a compact, changeable lens, mirrorless camera, Sony's family of E-mount cameras, especially this new A6000, should be on your short list. Sony's new Alpha A6000 is an impressive 24.3 megapixel Exmor APS-C CMOS sensor-equipped camera. And it has Sony's newest Bion's X processor. This camera is fast. The burst rate for those 24.3 megapixel images is 11 frames a second with continuous autofocus. And the hybrid AF system is fast too. There are 179 phase detection autofocus points plus 25 contrast detection autofocus points and they cover practically the entire image area. And with so many phase detection autofocus points, the focus system is noticeably quick. Sony claims this is the fastest autofocus system in the world. Now I didn't do any lab tests, but have a listen to this. Let's talk about image quality. You would expect 24.3 megapixel images from a modern Sony APS-C size sensor would be really great, and they are. They're color accurate and sharp, and the standard JPEG processing is actually quite good. I often shoot RAW or RAW plus JPEG because I prefer the added flexibility and I like managing image noise myself and the dynamic range as well. Whenever I'm doing post-processing and the A6000 RAW files give me a lot to work with. The camera's ISO range is from 100 to 25,600, and I think the low light performance is about as good as any modern APS-C sensor I've used lately. The low light noise gives you a good image at 3,200, and I think the ISO 6400 images are pretty usable. When I bump the ISO to 12,800 or 25,600, the images were especially noisy, and false colors started showing up, so I'm probably not going to do much shooting over 6400. Because the entire family of E-mount lenses, like this kit 16 to 50 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 zoom, are well-made quality glass. The images are crisp and color accurate and have minimal distortion. And with the crop factor of 1.5x, the 16 to 50 is a focal length equivalent to a 24 to 75 millimeter lens, which makes a nice general purpose zoom. It stores small in the standby position so that you can drop the A6000 in a large pocket very easily. Additionally, the lens has Sony's optical steady shot image stabilization, which helps to reduce the appearance of camera shake. On the topic of lenses, I also got to test this impressive E-mount Zeiss Tuit 32mm f1.8 lens. That's a 48mm equivalent focal length. This is a lens for artists, and the build quality and control are wonderful. The focus remains super fast, like what I showed you with the kit lens, but because you can go for really wide apertures, you can get images with a very shallow depth of field. Considering the high build quality and the image quality, this lens is a truly sound investment that'll stay with you as you upgrade to future E-mount cameras. I really like the ergonomics of this camera. Unlike the entry-level A5000, there are many more of the exposure controls which have direct access with a quick button press or twist of a dial. There's a shooting mode dial with all of the modes pros and enthusiasts are used to on their DSLRs, like programmed auto, shutter priority, aperture priority, and full manual. There's a dedicated movie mode for a little extra movie control, although you can use the movie record button in other modes to quickly grab video. There's a sweep panorama mode, 
also scene selection mode, so you can tell the camera about your environment and then it adjusts settings accordingly. And there are a couple of automatic modes called Intelligent Auto and Superior Auto. But I was happily surprised to see that Sony has a mode for users who want to save their setup in advance and then recall it later. It's called Memory Recall, and that's the MR position on the mode dial. There are several programmable function buttons, and there's a control wheel that spins and also has a joystick-style button function, as well as a center button. There's a control dial at the top right corner of the camera, and I really like the ergonomics of how this control responds as part of my natural grip. And the grip shape is good, though it is a little shallow for my taste. I'd also consider menus to be a part of the good ergonomics, and because they're well laid out and very similar to the menus from Sony's DSLT cameras, rather than the menus which are legacy from NEX cameras, I like these menus much better. And a quick press of the function button on the back gives you on-screen adjustment access to lots of important controls without a trip to the menus. The tilting LCD is a nice high resolution 921,000.3 inch screen, but the downward tilt is a bit limited for the overhead shooting position. Shooting low, the LCD panel has more travel and it goes almost flat. And when you go outside, you'll appreciate the OLED electronic viewfinder. It's 1.44 million dots and it's far better than the LCD in bright sunshine. The EVF has a snap-on eye cup which is easy to put on or take off. And that's a good thing because it does stick out quite a bit. So depending on your case or pocket situation, you might want to pop it off from time to time. I'm also happy to report that the EVF has an automatic sensor. So it switches on automatically from the LCD when you put the camera to your eye. The built-in flash is one of those bendy kind of flashes, which you can pull back manually to bounce off of a low white ceiling if you like for indirect flash, and the multi-interface shoe allows you to add a wide range of additional small flashes and other Sony compatible devices like a pro microphone if the built-in mic isn't good enough for the kind of filming you're doing. And you'd need to use that or an off-camera recorder for high quality audio during filming since there's no standard onboard mic jack for video. The video quality is quite good for a camera in this class you can shoot 1080p 60 video as AVC HD files or 1440 by 1080 at 30 frames a second if you'd rather have MP4 files. Of course, there are a number of other smaller and lower quality video file options and lower frame rates available. I'm happy to report that there's onboard Wi-Fi and near field communication, so you can connect with your Android or iOS device for image transfer and remote viewfinder and shutter control. The Android and iOS apps are free and they're easy to set up and use, but the controls are pretty limited. The A6000 is a great camera and I'm happy to recommend it to lots of my friends, but there are a handful of little things that I would change if I could. The memory card slot in the battery compartment is a little tough to use with the battery door right there. Sony only ships a simple little manual with the camera and the more complete downloadable PDF help guide was kind of hard to find online. Several activity lights are a bit too hidden for my taste, with the memory card activity LED on the bottom of the camera, and the tiny charging indicator hidden inside the charging port socket area, and one final little thing that I always fix when a camera maker wants me to use their camera as my battery charger. For less than 20 bucks, you can get this Watson NP FW50 battery charger, and since I usually buy a second battery for each of my cameras, I never have to worry that my camera is busy being my charger. So let me ask you, do you want great image quality, amazingly fast autofocus, 11 frames a second burst shooting, a nice selection of available lenses, lots of pro features and ergonomics, or a great value in a modern mirrorless camera? Well, have a look at the Sony Alpha A6000 and see if it'll work for you. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training.
We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.